My name is Chris Merritt. I am a senior scientist at Nanostring Technology. I work in the R&D division. I've been here for five years now. So there was one very specific change we had to make to this LifeSafe protocol to make it compatible with the Encounter platform, and this was the addition of a proteinase K step, uh, which we ended up basically found out that the gunk from crude lysate interfered with the bead purification that's very specific to nanostring, and that stealth really, uh, addition of that really helped boost counts in the end for this assay. This updated protocol is, it's actually very similar to the previous protocol. You will get very similar results using this, but we basically updated and given more detail details on the different steps that the user must actually um, do for the protocol. And we've run it through many other users in the lab, so it's highly reproducible and works across very many cell lines. Previously, we only had only looked at a few cell lines. The second aspect of this assay is that we had to develop three specific protocols for three different types of cells. So we have a specific protocol for suspension cell lines, a protocol for adherent cell lines, and the final protocol is for primary cells, for both human or mouse cells, or basically any primary cell type that one would find in a lab. So we focused on three broad classes of cell lines to look at. This is suspension cell lines, adherent cell lines, and primary cells. So at first we looked at the commonly used cell lines like HeLa cells, A431, or Jerkat cells. We then moved on and expanded the list of cells to about 20 different cell lines or cell types to make sure it's compatible with all of these. The last thing we did uh, for the protocol is to make sure it was compatible with the 96 well format, because this is very important when you're trying to do higher throughput sort of assays, which we're trying to actually do with the Plexet assay. So when I was in academia, um, I would develop new protocols, basically for the experiment I was working on, or that very specific assay I was trying to figure out. If it worked out, if it was a novel assay, I would need to teach others in the lab how to run it so they could also apply to their experiments. Or I would work with neighboring labs to work on a similar system and have to teach them. So Nanostring is a large company and we have users all across the world. And I, again, don't have the luxury to actually interact with every customer and help teach them how to run the protocol. So we need to make sure the protocol is very reproducible and very clear and will basically work in anyone's hands with just a, just a printout of the protocol. So when we're doing validation, we look across different types of users. So we have super users in the lab who've actually run the protocol and helped develop the protocol, which for them, the protocol is gonna typically work quite well. What we wanna do after that is bring in some naive users to make sure it works in the hands of others. So in this case, we took two naive users and one experienced user, basically found that the data looked quite similar and got really nice correlation for purified RNA and for lysates. So when we're developing a new protocol, like this new Lysate protocol, or even just a new product, the first thing that happens at a company like Nanostring is marketing will go out there and figure out the voice of the customer, like what they're actually looking for. And then they'll work closely with R&D, like a scientist like me, to figure out what are the requirements for this product to make sure it's actually gonna meet the need of the customer. Once we figure that out, we go through write specifications for the product and eventually write down protocols that we're gonna test to make sure the protocol or assay will actually work in their hands. Um, this is a pretty rigorous process. Um, once we actually get the validation data, we meet as a group in R&D and at different parts of the company, make sure it actually passed all the criteria we laid out early on. And then eventually we start interacting with early customers, which we'll call like beta customers sometimes, to make sure it works in their hands. After that, we'll actually train internal nanostream folks, so like the field application scientist or the tech services team, I'll actually teach them in the lab in Seattle how to run the assay so they can go out there when they're on the phone with customers um, to be more educated on how to actually run the assay. When we did the validation of this new protocol, the first thing we did is we just wanted to make sure we were getting linear results in terms of if you add more lysate, do I get more counts, which you do for this assay. Uh, the next part of the validation was to make sure it worked across all different cell types you might see in the lab. So we can't test all cell lines 
a nano string because it's just too much effort. So we found three buckets basically that we could look at. These are adherent cell lines, suspension cell lines, and primary cells. So we looked across all these three different cell types. These are examples of four adherent cell lines, four suspension cell lines, and four primary cell types across human mice, showing that purified RNA data looks very similar to data obtained with the crude lysates. In the end, we try to make it easier for the customer to actually analyze the end counter counts when they come out of the system. For that, we've uh, developed the end solver packages to actually look at this and the advanced analysis pack. So we developed this new lysate assay for Plexet specifically, but we found that it works for all end counter gene expression assays. So what we've shown in the validation is it works quite well user to user, and we're excited for people to actually use it in the wild because we think it's going to work quite well and it's quite efficient and the way to get their data much faster. Mm -hmm.